morning, congregation. Welcome to worship this morning, the second in our sermon series called I Am In. And this morning we're going to reflect on God's work, the fact that you are invaluable to God's work. So as a call to worship this morning, I read from Psalm 9 and reading the first two verses. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Let us pray together. You are our good shepherd who guides us to the good parts of life. We thank you. We thank you that it is you who satisfies our souls and fills us with goodness. We thank you for ensuring that we are followed by your goodness and mercy all the days of our lives. Thank you for your power and work in our lives and your blessings over us. Thank you that you are able to bring hope through even the toughest of times. Thank you for your great love and care. Thank you that you are always with us and will never leave us. Forgive us for when we don't thank you enough. For you are with us, always willing to forgive us. Forgive us for the times that we are ungrateful for what you do in our lives. Forgive us for the times, Lord, that we don't say thank you for being forgiven. We receive your forgiveness this morning. So would you renew our spirits today? Would you fill us with peace and joy? We've gathered to praise you and to give you thanks. For you alone are worthy. In your name we pray. Amen. This morning's reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verses 12 to 27. Listen to the word of God. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would one body be? And as it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty, while our presentable parts need no special treatment. But God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ. And each one of you is a part of it. You are all uniquely valuable to God. And you are valuable because of who you are. You have been uniquely created by God. Jesus told a parable in John chapter 10 from verses 1 to 10 about a shepherd that had 100 sheep. And then he left the 99 sheep because one of them went missing. The shepherd loved that one so much that he was prepared to leave all other 99 to go after the one. That one was so valuable to the shepherd. You are invaluable because of who you are. You are uniquely valuable to God. You are his child. You are not just valuable for who you are. You are also valuable because you were created for a special purpose. You were created to make a difference in God's church. And you were created to make a difference in this world. So often we look at the church and we look at the people around us. 
We see the gifts that people have been given by God. And we think maybe we're not good enough or we're not talented enough. Or maybe we're not spiritual enough to make a difference. Sometimes we say things like, um, you know, well, that person even quotes scripture in their prayers. I'm not that spiritual. I don't pray that well. I cannot do that. Or we say things like that person speaks so eloquently and I don't have the gift of the gab to be able to do that. Maybe I'm not good enough. The lie that so many of us believe when it comes to the church is this. We believe that if we were not here, it would not really matter that much. We think, if I was not here, it would not make that big a difference. Today I pray that you will see that you are invaluable to God's work. You are uniquely prepared for a specific task. You have been given divine gifts by the Spirit, passions and talents to serve the wider body of Christ. His church. God created you and he's put you in this moment, in this time in history, because it is at this time that he wants you to best glorify him. And so you are invaluable to the work of Christ. Let's go back for a moment to the metaphor that Paul used when he spoke to the church in Corinth. They would have probably have felt like a lot of us. Many of them were not born of noble birth. Many were not highly educated. They were slaves. They were ordinary people. They weren't born with a silver spoon in their mouths. So they may have felt insecure about how they could make a difference in their little church in Corinth. And Paul gave them this metaphor and he compared the church that they were a part of to the human body. And this is what he said in 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 12. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts. And though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. If we just think for a moment of the animal kingdom, an elephant, when we see an elephant on its own, we just call it an elephant. But when we see elephants together, we call, it, we call them a herd. When we see a lion, we just label it lion. <coughs> but when we see lions together, we call them a pride of lions. I wonder if you know what you call a group of cheaters. They called a coalition. Or what would you call a, a group of donkeys? They called a pace. What would you call a group of crows? They called a murder of crows. And what would you call a group of vultures? Believe it or not, they're called a committee. So what do we, we see about this, these examples? That each animal on its own has a name. But yet, as a group of animals, together they take on a new identity. So what do you call a person then who is submitted to the Lordship of Christ? A disciple, a follower of Jesus, a Christian. What do you call a group of Christians gathered together to worship God, empowered by Spirit to make a difference in this world? A group gathered together for worship. You might call the church, or Paul calls them the body. Of Christ on your own your own you are just a disciple but when you gather together with other spirit filled and word empowered believers you take on a new identity you are his body in other words you are his hands when you serve people in his name you are his feet when you take the gospel to other places and people you are his mouth when you lift others up with the goodness and encouragement of who Christ is You are his heart when you express his love to people who are hurting. You are an invaluable part of the body of Christ. When the enemy says to you, you're not good good enough, you must say to him, my God created me and sent his son for me. His spirit dwells within me and I am an invaluable part of the body of Christ and every part of the body matters. When Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, he knew that some people thought they did not matter in the body. I read again from 1 Corinthians 12. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, it would for that reason not cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? 
And if the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? In other words, every single part of the body matters. Every member of the church, like each part of our human bodies, has a part to play in the body of Christ. The church is at its strongest when everyone is contributing their individual talents and spiritual gifts to the community. And so each one of you has a role to play. For example, you don't need to make big waves to have a big impact. For example, the giant clam stays rooted for its whole adult life in one place. But it does so much in that position in the, in the ocean. It anchors reefs. It shelters shrimps and crabs. It filters water. It grows food for others. Each of us has a role to play. Even vultures have a role to play in nature. They get rid of anthrax and other toxins in carcasses, preventing them from causing death and disease in other species of animals. So let's go back to the church and leave the animal kingdom for a moment. Your part, your role, your presence, your voice, your opinion, your contribution, it matters to the family of God. You should attend church like your role in it is vital to its growth and to its health. The church is the body of Christ according to scripture and each member is an individual and valuable part of that body. The body of Christ, like our human bodies, cannot function when one part is missing. You need the people of the church and the people of the church need you. The church needs you to show up on a Sunday because the person who sits, sits next to you needs to say to you hello. They need to say, I'm glad that you are here and you need to do likewise. The parents of children who attend church need you to serve in the Sunday school so that they can take time out to hear the gospel in the service. Your home cell group needs you to pray for them as they struggle with daily life issues. Your church's role in your life is irreplaceable. So is your role in the church. When you go to church, every time you join the body of Christ, you are doing things no one else can do to build the body up around you. And what's even more is that you are doing it alongside people who are going to be building you up in return. Paul went on to say in 1 Corinthians 12, On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weak are indispensable. Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you has a part in it. Sadly, there are always those people in the church that are overlooked, because maybe they're not up front on a Sunday morning, or they're not at the door, or they're not at the lectern, or they're not serving tea or teaching the children. Let me remind you this morning that every single one of us is part of the body and each part matters. Another example in our bodies is our hands. 50% of the strength of our hands comes from the smallest of our fingers. And the little pinky may seem like the least important finger and yet it provides so much strength to the hand. It's often the parts of the body that are least visible or seem the least important, that actually are the most important. Sometimes what you do in the church is invisible. And just because it's invisible does not mean it's not important. You may be an invisible prayer warrior. And then when lives are changed, you know in that moment that your private prayers and faith has touched the heart of God and lives are changed. Other may, people may never know what your gift does for them. Other people may never know that you prayed for them. You may never know if your smile made somebody come back to church after their first visit. Just because, of, just because what you do is not visible does not mean it's not important. You are valuable to the work of God. You are valuable because you are a child of God. You are valuable because you have gifts to give. You have talents with which to serve. You are part of the body of Christ and the church would be incomplete without your valuable contribution. You are called by God and chosen by God and you are very capable of doing what God has called you to do. 
you know, that feeling when you wake up in the middle of the night and your arm has gone to sleep or your leg has gone to sleep and it feels completely numb. And in that moment, totally useless. If you are not using the gifts God has given to you, then you have gone to sleep. You're not living out your calling, your function, your part, your position. And if that is you, maybe you need to wake up this morning. Because you are invaluable to the body of Christ. You have something unique to offer that nobody else has to give the body. And if one part of the body is asleep, then the rest of the body has to work so much harder. Others have to put in more because you are not fulfilling your role. I've said this before over the last couple of weeks that the, ch the church is not a building that we go to. The church is the living body of Christ of which each one of us is a part. We don't go to church to meet our own needs. We go to church to meet the needs of others and to worship Christ. What do you think would happen if every part of the body got actively engaged in ministry? What would be different in our communities if we saw our role as, as significant and valuable to the work of God? Imagine that for a moment. Believe this morning that your story matters, that your talents matter, that your gift matters. What do you think would happen if all of us stepped up and did what we were uniquely created to do in the body of Christ? Think of what is possible in the world if the church would rise up and if you believed with all your heart that you recognize that you matter to God. That he has given you gifts and talents unique to yourself and that you are an invaluable part of the body of Christ. The church is who you are. And you might be the elbow, you might be the pinky, you might be the kneecap, you might be the nose, so on and so forth. But you have a, a part to play that is invaluable. And if you're not expressing the unique value for which you were created in the church, if you are asleep, then something that God wants done in this world is not being done. Every time you give, it may not be much, but your gift matters. Every time you pray, you may not feel like much matters or changes, but your prayers touch the very heart of God. Every time you gather for worship, you may not feel like it that Sunday, but every part of the body needs the other part. You matter. The place where we gather to worship God and fellowship with each other is this congregation, Gravel and Ernest Dream, all the congregations listening this morning. However, the true purpose of the church exists beyond the building or this place where we gather for worship. Its power is found in its people and their involvement in the world. And you matter. Your talents, your gifts, your abilities matter to the body of Christ. You have a very unique contribution to make. And just be reminded this morning that you are invaluable. Let us pray. Lord, you have called us to work for you. You have shown us to love and told us to be kind, to be patient, to not be self-seeking, to be servants. Give us the courage to minister to those in need with your love. Help us to be humble in all we do. May your spirit lead us in all we do and help us to be joyful as we serve you. Help us to be creative and worshipful. We pray that we would serve you with a heart overflowing with gratitude for all you have done for us. May our ministry to one another be done with sincere love. Love that is patient, love that is kind. Thank you, Jesus, for your example. That you came to earth not to be served, but to serve others and gave your life as a ransom for many. Help us, Lord, to let our light shine before others so that we may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. In his name we pray this morning. Amen. And I may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God our Father and the strength of his Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen.